Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for joining the webinar. My name is Neil. I'm the senior trainer at Creative Hut. Uh, for those of you joining us for the first time, uh, Creative Hut are a STEAM education resource and training provider. And one of our key partners in everything that we do is a company called MakeBlock. So for those of you who aren't familiar with MakeBlock, I'll just explain quickly what they're uh, mainly uh, about, they actually usually deal in lots of great hands-on technology like robotics that you can see on the screen here, which Kate for education from early years all the way through to further and higher education. Um, but it's not just about robotics, they also deal in great technology like 3D printers and laser boxes. There's lots of different ways you can use um, all of these resources in the classroom. Um, what goes hand in hand with those is their free of charge programming software and curriculum materials to help uh, you to use it in the classroom or at home, depending on what um, uh, scenario or environment you're working in. Um, and what they've also developed to support all of this is their STEAM on board program. Now, this is their platform providing lots of different support to their end users. So that would usually be in the form of face-to-face -face training as well as online training, um, but then lots of uh, guidance, um, ideas, support on all the resources and software which they um, provide. But what they've just recently developed, um, which is brilliant for the situation that we're currently in, is their STEAM onboard online program, uh, which basically makes use of just their free of charge programming software. Because obviously with the situation we're in, it's a little bit more difficult to get our hands on the, the physical robotics resources. So this is something that everyone can make use of um, just by accessing the free materials. Now I know uh, we're also on lesson 12 today, so um, this is our final lesson of course, but for those of you that are just watching or joining for the first time today, I'm just gonna give a quick overview of the, uh, the course as a whole. So we have been delivering this as um, live webinars over the, the course of the past four weeks. There have been a total, or oh, after today, there will be a total of 12 tutorials on 12 different 45 minute lessons, which you can deliver to your children, to your pupils, um, uh, to, to help build their, their computing and coding skills. Okay, so don't worry if you are joining us for the first time today. All those past sessions have been recorded and are available on our YouTube channel. So you can look back at those and learn at your own pace at a time that suits you. And we can provide you with all the lesson materials that go hand in hand with those. And that's in the form of the uh, lesson slides, the lesson plans and example programs um, to help you deliver it to your kids. Um, well, we're also encouraging everyone to sign up directly with MakeBlock. So while we're delivering this ourselves, um, it is being uh, delivered in conjunction with MakeBlock themselves. If you sign up on their page, which is this link here, uh, we will send that link through to you after the webinar as well. Um, but you can basically get access to even more live webinars, which might be at a more suitable time for you. You can again get access to all of the classroom materials um, and you'll also have the opportunity uh, or even be encouraged to upload the work that you and your children are doing. Um, and you'll also be able to view work that others are doing. So it's basically a user community, which is a great way for sharing ideas and best practice on um, other things that you can be doing within the, the coding platform. And then last but not least, of course, to take part in all of this and deliver the lessons um, and have your children work on it, you will need to access the MBlock 5 programming software, which this whole course is based on. Okay, so you can download that completely free at this link here. Uh, don't worry if you've not done that just yet. You don't need to have access to it as we're going through the tutorial. Uh, you'll be able to to download it and um, uh, work with it after the, the tutorial has finished. Okay, but they're the main things to be aware of. As I say, today is actually lesson 12, which is the last tutorial within the, uh, the full 12 week course. And lesson 12 is all about um, a, a scenario called guess numbers or guessing numbers. And the objectives of this lesson um, today is we're going to be uh, introduced to some even more coding blocks that we've not used before in the previous tutorials. And this is going to be enabling the children to identify and use appropriate sensing coding blocks. We're going to be look at sensing um, uh, within the programming interface, uh, which will allow the uh, the programs and the games that they're creating to handle user input. So it's another great addition to uh, <laughs> the games they're creating and coding is being able to handle 
inputs from the users are playing those games. We've not looked at that before. Um, and we will also be looking further at the operator coding blocks. That's something we've been looking at in a bit more detail in the, the past two lessons. But we're looking even further at the operator coding blocks and how we can use those uh, together with um, mathematical um, problems that are part of the games. OK, so that's what lesson number 12 is going to be based on. But uh, we'll always go on to a review for the previous lesson. So for those of, us, of you that did join us in lesson 10 and 11 on the Fruit Wars games, you'll hopefully remember how we were introduced to variables, okay? So we could create our own variables, which basically allow us to store and use data. Um, we can create as many variables as we, as we want, which can set um, those variables to certain values like zero or any specific value. We can change the value of those variables and we can actually get them to appear or be hidden on the screen, on the stage area. So hopefully everyone remembers um, uh, using those in the past couple of lessons. Again, if not, if you're only joining us for the first time, you'll be able to look back at those recordings of those. Um, but well, we're going to start with a uh, an example game for how we can start to use um, these new uh, blocks in terms of the, the sensing uh, coding blocks using inputs and using those operators. OK, so I'll bring the game up live on the program interface at the moment. But if uh, exactly as it sounds, we're going to be asked to guess numbers so you can see we've got the uh, instructions on how to play the game here and again for those of you joining us for the first time these slides that i'm going through these exactly the same slides that we'll be providing to you so you can run through these slides when you're delivering the lessons uh, to your children or pupils you're working with um, but yes yeah, so the instructions of this game really straightforward we're going to click on the green flag to start the game and panda so we're being introduced back to um the panda sprite in this game we've not had um uh, the pleasure of Panda's company for the last two uh, couple of lessons. Uh, but here's back now to help us with this game. And Panda's going to randomly think of a number and then let us guess what number they are we, they are thinking of. And we're going to do that by actually entering the number that we think that Panda's thinking of into a text box on the stage area. If the number's wrong, Panda's then going to give us some clues to help us take another guess and tell us whether the number is bigger or smaller than the first one that we've guessed. And then we can continue guessing until we've got it right, or if we do get it right, Panda will say bingo and uh, show or display that correct answer. So I'm going to load up the game now. I'll have a quick play of this uh, live on the screen. So let's just do one here. Uh, just to take a couple of seconds to load up. So I won't go into the codes in any detail just yet. We're going to be looking at how we create all this in more detail in a moment. I just want to show you what we're working towards playing, what we're working towards the kids creating for themselves, first of all. I'm just going to make this bigger uh, on the stage here so we can see uh, what's happening. So we can see we've got Panda in a classroom scenario today, or classroom setting. And if I click the green flag, it is going to start the game. And you can see... Panda is guessing a number between 1 and 20. Sorry, Panda is imagining a number between 1 and 20, and we've got to guess. So I'm going to enter my guess into this box that's appeared on the screen now. So I'm just going to start with the number 5. Okay, let's get 5. In the hit enter. So Panda's giving me a clue that the number is larger than 5, so it's somewhere between 5 and 20 now. Um, I'm going to go with a sign with 15. Uh, oh, wow. So, OK, that doesn't always happen that way. I managed to get it on my second guess. The correct answer was number 15. But let's just play that again to see if it goes through another uh, couple of times. So 1 and 20 again. And this time I'm going to guess 18. OK, so number smaller than 18. Let's go with 4. I got it again. I'm actually getting really, really lucky. You don't usually get it within a couple of guesses. I'm going to go one more round, see if I'm going to make a hat trick of guessing within two. Let's see what I get this time. I'm going to go 19. Numbers more than 19. Okay, let's try two. Numbers larger than two. And this time let's go with 16. Numbers more than 16. So it's going to be between two and 16. Let's say eight. Larger than eight. It's going to be eight between eight and 16. Let's try 12. Numbers smaller than 12. So between eight and 12. Oh, I'm going to be wondering what's going to be in the middle. Let's try 10. Larger than 10, so by default, this must be 11. There we go, bingo, okay. So that is how the game works, that we're just guessing a number, and then Pandas are giving us clues whether it's smart, small or larger, and gradually we're narrowing the, the, the gap that we've got to guess with to get the answers to correct. As simple as that, to play the game. So uh, now, of course, we're going to stop that and come back to our slides and start to think about how we can actually 
program that uh, and create the game for ourselves. So some of the key points to be aware of in terms of the program language uh, that we haven't looked at before are the use of random number, comparison, and join. So these are anything that we've looked at in any detail um, in the previous tutorials. So we'll uh, go through this step by step uh, to help our understanding of it. Um, but the first uh, thing that we're going to be looking at is... Um, random, uh, picking picking random num numbers. So all of these blocks are from the operator section. So these are, uh, sorry, the operator area is one we've looked at briefly before. Uh, we were looking at comparison, uh, comparing numbers and seeing whether they were less than a certain number in the previous uh, Fruit Wars games. Remember, we used it to compare the Y coordinates. So whether the coconuts or the uh, bananas were at the bottom of the screen to then switch back to the top of the screen. So that's why we were looking at operators before, but we're going to be using these in um, lots of different ways now. So one of the uh, main operators block is picking a number randomly from the specified range okay so we can set the range to be whatever you want in that game demo was looking at then the range was between 1 and 20 but we can just make it whatever you want and we're asking um this block to help us pick any random numbers between any range 1 to 10 1 to 30 1 to 100 15 to 45 can be whatever you want within that spe specified range we can then start to um, compare in different ways so these um, hexagonal blocks we use mainly within those if-then statements. So it's helping us create, again, those conditional statements within our if-then blocks. If something is equal to something, then do this. Or if something is greater than something, then do this. So it's helping us create those conditional statements um, based on specific um, values um, uh, within these parameters, within these operations operators block. So hopefully that does make sense just from the explanation, but again, we'll be coming on to this live to help you understand that even more. And then what we can also do is link two values together with this join block, okay? So we can actually connect two different things. We can actually be connecting um, uh, one word with another word, or it can be connecting a result from something with another word. Uh, we can connect lots of different things together. Again, it doesn't quite become clear when you're looking at this, but it'll all become clear when we start to program with it live in a moment, okay? Um, we've got an example of the full um, program we're gonna create here. Uh, we'll build this up step by step in a second, but we're basically gonna be doing a process where we're uh, using the um, uh, operators together with variables that we looked at in the previous lessons. So we can actually set um, an envelope, so a variable of an envelope, to contain a specific number and use those numbers to say different things on the screen depending on the value. Whether the value is greater than five, equal to five, or less than five, it will say something different, as you can see in these say blocks here. Okay. So again, hopefully that starts to make sense, but we'll start to work through this step by step to help clarify completely. So we're going to start coding this up um, for ourselves now. So I'm going to demonstrate this on the screen, but remember, of course, these are the slides which you'll have to present to your children, to your pupils, uh, to help them work through this step by step for themselves. But I'm going to go back to the programming interface first of all. Uh, let's make this smaller and start a new file like so. Don't need to save what I've just been working on there. Let's just start from scratch, okay? So I just need to go to my sprites section first of all. And you can see that the first step is uh, within the Panda sprite, we want to use um, that standard block which we're using lots of our programs, the when green flag clicked. So I'm just finding that from the events tab area here, bringing in when green flag clicked. And uh, next thing is I want to do is create a variable. So remember again, variables are what we're looking at with helping us to create uh, the scores within the Fruit Wars game, for example. This time I'm going to create a variable for an envelope. So it's going to be something contained uh, within an envelope. So I just need to create this variable and name it exactly that, red envelope. Let's go to variables, uh, make a variable and call it red envelope. I think I've got my spelling correct there and hit OK. And you can see it's created that uh, variable for of all the four different blocks, uh, which automatically come up for it. Okay, so that's the first step. We're then going to select the select red envelope to zero from the variables block. Okay, so that's the first thing we need, uh, which is this one here, set red envelope to zero. Um, but we're not going to keep it like that. So what we do, we want to assign 
a, a value or a number to the envelope, but we don't want to specify what it is. This is where we're going to start to bring in that random block that we were just talking about. So it's pick random between one and 10 into that red envelope. So I'm going to go to my operators uh, area now, and you can see we've got the pick random block here, which I can just slot into there. And again, I can manipulate these numbers to be whatever I wanted between five and 20, whatever we think is suitable for whatever code or program or game we're uh, creating. But let's, for the time being, keep that at between one and 10. Okay. And next step is bringing in that if then statement. So um, we're starting to create the, the condition that we want um, uh, to be met before doing something else. So I just need to go to my control tab and bring in that if then statement uh, like so. And now we start to bring in those comparison operators. The first thing we need to bring in is this hexagonal here, um, the greater than. So we're going to compare two numbers against each other and see if this one is greater than what's in here. So I'm going back to my operators and bring in the greater than here. Um, you can see what we want to do, uh, what we want to compare against each other is the red envelope and the number of fires. So we want to see if the number that's been stored within red envelope variable is greater than five. Okay, so that's what's um, being set here. And then we want to compare it within this next part. So I'm going to go back to my variables, first of all, bring in that red envelope into the semicircle here, circle, sorry, change that to five. And now I can put the operator into the if then block as a conditional uh, statement. Okay. And the next step is what do we want it to do? So if that value that we stored within the red envelope variable is greater than five, what do we want it to happen? We want it to say something. So we're going to go bring in our say hello for two seconds uh, block, first of all. So let's go to the looks um, block area and bring in say hello for two seconds and pop that underneath. But it's not actually that we want it to say. We're now going to use that join certain things together. So this is where we can join different bits of text, for example, together. Okay, so let's bring in that now. So going back to the operators and bringing in join. So by default, again, it always goes to that join apple and banana. But we want it to say um, what's been um, stored within the variable, what the value is. Uh, stored within that red envelope value. And we're also going to imagine that that value is actually dollars, okay? So the game we're creating is just getting lucky on receiving a certain amount of dollars, okay? So all I need to do for the first part is again go back to my variables and say join red envelope. So that's going to state the value that is in the red envelope that has been set in this first block here. And then we want it to say this sentence here, dollars received, how lucky you are. Okay, so I'm going to do exactly that. Dollars received, how lucky you are. Okay, as simple as that. And I can now pop that into where it currently says say hello. Rather than say hello, we want it to say that. Okay, simple as that to start building that up. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, we'll see this live in a second. And then the next steps are we want it to say different things if the value of the number within the red envelope is different. So we're going to set two other uh, conditional statements for if the um, the number is equal to five or if the number is less than five. And you see you've got these two scenarios that suggest in here saying if it's five dollars received, not bad, or if it's less than five, dollars received, then it's not quite as high as we want it to be. And it's going to look next time. Okay, so we can build up these next two parts of the code as well. And if you remember, I don't have to go all the way into creating them up from the start. I can actually right click and I can duplicate what I've already um, come, uh, done within the first part of the program, like so. And then there's only certain things I need to change, which are mainly these operators and what we're saying in here. So I can actually delete these out and just start these two bits again. So again, I'm going into my operators. This time I want to use um, uh, equal to, so I'm going to change equal to five and bring in the red envelope as well. Okay, into there. And then one more time on the last one. This time it's going to be if it is less than five, so we'll cover it all bases. 
and need to bring in my red envelope variable just one more time like so there we go and also of course we want to change the text in here so it's equals um five we want to say not bad if it's less than five good luck next time so let's just change the text to exactly that not bad and on this one better luck next time Ooh, um let's try that again better luck next time like so okay so you can see now we've got three different uh, comparisons taking place if it's greater than five equal to five or less than five it's going to do one of these three different things let's just quickly see that in action so let's make the stage area bigger hit green so five dollars received not bad so we're going straight to the on there if i hit the green again uh, eight dollars received how lucky you are so that's when it was above the value of five Six dollars received, we we're getting very lucky. Above five again, uh, nine dollars received. We are being extremely lucky and getting a higher. There we go. We've got two dollars received below the five. Better look next time. So we've got those three different things taking place depending on what um, is the the value of the red envelope is being set to each time within that first block here. Okay. So hopefully, again, that is all becoming clear how we use these different blocks. Um, within the code so hopefully we're all comfortable with that but we're going to go on to something a little bit different next so the other thing that we said we were going to be uh, looking at using is how we can gather input or sense input and use that as part of our programs and the gameplay for those different games that we are creating so that's what we're going to look at next uh, so again something we've not looked at yet in the previous tutorials these are found in the sensing block area and the main one we're going to be using is the ask and wait block. So you can see you can ask whatever you want, ask a question uh, for whatever data you want someone to input. Um, and that data will be stored within this block here uh, for us to use in other parts of the program. So let's give an example here of ask what, what's your name and wait, and then say your name for two seconds. So it's actually asking us to join um, an example um, a bit of text like your name is and whatever we answered in the input block here okay so it's combining the input with this text here for two seconds as simple as that but let's just build that up uh, again together uh, to make sure we fully understand that so it's taking us through this step by step uh, again what you'll be able to use with your children people you're working with step by step so i'm actually going to go back to the interface now and let's start completely from scratch actually let's take out this full code and do this step by step from the beginning so um select when green flag is clicked um which we use also quite commonly when green flag is clicked actually going to start all the way from new you just way to do this all the way from new don't need to save that start a new one go to our sprites and now let's bring in that green flag clicked um, and now we want to go to that sensing blocks area to find and bring in that ask what's your name and wait. So I'm going to do sensing and bring in ask what's your name and wait. So that's what it defaults to. Again, you can put whatever question or instruction or command that you want within there. Um, but for the purposes, we're going to stick with that what's your name and wait. Um, and then next step is bringing in that say hello for two seconds from our looks tab so this is just saying uh, say hello on the screen and uh, we want to change this so we're going to be using that join uh, block again from the operators um, and we will be embedding that into this but let's go find that block first of all so we're going back to our operators section here and bringing in at join apple and banana and you can see what we want to join together is uh, on the screen we want to state your name is so we can actually change that first one to your name is and it's going to tell us what the name is from what we've entered into here so to do that we go back to our sensing block and bring in this answer one here so your name is answer so that answer uh, is being fed into this uh, from what's been entered in that sensing block okay and then we just need to then pop that fully into the say block so to replace the say hello with this we just drag that into place and we are good to go okay so um, all we need to do to run this is to uh, run the green flag and we can uh, actually have a go at that now so let's make that stage area bigger hit green uh, okay so you can see pans asking what's your name and again we've got this text box come up um just like uh, we were looking at in the guest numbers game so i can say my name is neil like so and it will 
put that back to me. Your name is Neil. Exactly as we saw in the code. So I could just expand on that, say Neil Taylor as well. Uh, hit uh, OK. Your name is Neil Taylor. OK. So again, simple as that to start using those uh, uh, sensing blocks uh, for data inputs and then use that as outputs uh, within the, these uh, scenarios like this. Okay, so hopefully we all followed that okay. Um, I think these are fairly straightforward um, on to understand the basics of how we can use them, but we can really use these in lots of different ways and in complex ways to start helping the kids to build up the games for themselves. So at this point, we'd be handing over to them to uh, create their own game. And the first part of it is we're asking them to create the, the panda guessing game that we sort of start for themselves. So remember, we had a quick go at this at the beginning where panda was imagining a number between one and 20 and we had to guess which one they were doing. We'd like the children to build that game up for themselves, okay? So it is giving them the requirements um, for that. So they've got the five main requ requirements, um, adding the appropriate backdrop to bring the game to life, being able to generate a random number uh, between one and 20, um, and beginning the game, the player is reminded of needing to guess the the, the range uh, of the number um, and enter the number from the keyboard into that box that appears. And then if we get it uh, incorrect, we need to give the uh, clues on whether the number is actually larger or smaller than our guess. Um, and then when they've got it correct, it will actually say bingo and the game is over. So that's the... the the uh, overview and instructions of what they need to create. So again, at this point, um, and the, uh, after uh, after going through all the previous lessons, um, the hope might be that the, the children or the pupils are confident and comfortable enough to start having a go at that for themselves, just from the instructions that they've been given on the screen here. Um, but if not, um, we can, oh, sorry, I didn't uh, mention as well, that you've also got this um, reference statement. So it's, uh, the centers which they can use as a helping hand uh, to create the instructions on the screen as part of the game. Um, but if they don't have the um, uh, the full knowledge, the full confidence on building that from scratch, what they can do, of course, is use the example program for the game, which we'll be supplying to you to help them along. Or, um, again, within the full lesson plan for this, you can see on the screen now, it has got the full step-by-step -step instructions, which you can print off or have on the screen to help them uh, build up the game step by step. So you can see if I go down to the uh, right place, uh, there, there we go. So um, while in the slide, you've got just these two bits to help um, introduce the activity and get them to start building the game up for themselves. If they do want the step by step instructions, you can see you've got those within the full lesson plan. OK, so you can and use these if needed to help them build up the game step by step. And just a reminder on what we were doing within that, I'm going to uh, load up the game one more time. Let me just save what I was just working on there. And if I go back to the sprite section, um, and this was the, the main code for creating that game. So you can see, hopefully, from what we've just been doing as warm-up activities, you can see what's being um, used to help create that game. Again, you can see you've got the uh the three different scenarios but each time it is giving the the, the clue okay um until it actually gets the one uh, the number correct if it is equal so if the guess or the answer is equal to the random number that's been generated here it will say bingo and they win the game in these two sections of the code here this is where it's given them the clue of either being smaller or larger again depending on uh, whether their answer is less than or greater than the random number that's been selected here. Okay, so you can see here we're combining the data input together with the operators and the uh, the variables. Okay, so again, I hope that's making sense, but we'll be supplying all this uh, for you so you can keep on looking at this in more detail after the webinar. But of course, at this point, what we would like them to do is to 
uh, see if they can take it further. So the extension task for this, it's again just keeping it fairly open and encouraging them to adapt and change the game in any way they see fit to, to make it better, more interesting, more difficult or even easier. Whatever they want to change to it, give them the, the freedom to get creative and do whatever they want. But um, a couple of the uh, suggestions here are increasing the difficulty of the game by limiting the number of times for entries um, and adding some sort of challenge failure. Um, uh, game over if they don't manage to to solve the uh, the number guessing game. Okay, so I'm again going to show you a quick example of how I've gone about that extension task. So let's just find that code now, which is this one here. A little bit about our extension example. Don't need to save that original game. Um, and this is it. Okay, so I'm going to play it first of all and see if you can see what I've done. Okay, let's hit green. So guessing between one and two, text box comes up. I'm gonna guess three. Okay, number is larger than three. Uh, let's try 17. So it's small to think it's between three and 17. Let's try 12. Number is larger than 12. Oh, game over for me. Okay, so what I've done there is obviously limit the amount of guesses. So you can see what I've done. Rather than it being on a forever loop uh, until they get it right, I've only allowed this part of the code to repeat three times. So the user only gets three guesses to get the number correct. Um, and if they don't manage to get it correct within those three guesses, it will then broadcast, remember those broadcasting and receiving messages that we've been using in the previous tutorials. I decided to bring that into um, my code. So it's broadcasting game over, which is being received by this additional sprite here for the game over. Over. Um, so when it does receive that, it's playing the oops sound to help signify that the game has ended. And I'm also uh, using the game over sprite with a, uh, a change size effect to basically pulsate before stopping all the scripts and making the game over. Um, so let's just see that in action one more time so you can see exactly what I was talking about. So again, guessing the number between one and ten. Let's try two. Number is larger than two. Okay, let's try 18. It's more than 18. So obviously I'm trying to manipulate this so I get it wrong and you can see what I've done, but let's try I know, seven. Okay, larger than seven. So, okay, again, so you can see my game over pulsating and you hear the sound there. And that's the game over. We'd have to start again to try and get it within three guesses. So that's how I've got about the extension task. Again, let the kids get as creative as they want. I'm sure they can think of all sorts of different ways in which they can expand on that game, maybe bring in even more sprites, more rules, um, uh, more layers to the game and combine, try and combine everything they've um, been learning about over the, the course of the past 12 tutorials. Okay, so before we start to wrap up, uh, of course, what, what you always, always want to get them to do was to have uh, created their game and added on any extensions to that, get them to share their work. Um, and that can be the case of either getting you to play the game, getting their friends or siblings or fellow pupils to have a go at the games that they've created. And of course, share it on the MateBlock platform as well. You can share what they've created on the MateBlock um, user community platform um, to show off fully what they've been able to create. So feel free to do that as well. Um, and we're going to finish with our, our final quiz. Um, for this tutorial. So we're going to have three questions as always to help uh, consolidate our learning from this particular lesson. So I'm going to ask you to imagine what you think the answer is and then reveal. So question number one, which of the following blocks can handle user input? So which from these four options will handle user inputs? How can we get um, people to input data? It is, of course, C. So hopefully you all remember that one straight away from the tutorial we've just gone through. Question number two, which of the following number will not occur when running a script with this operator? Picking around the number between one and 20, which of these four options cannot occur? Hopefully everyone's got this one correct. It's of course D21, can't happen because it's outside of those um, that specified uh, value range between one and 20. And last but not least, number three, the program of a sprite is as follows. When green flag clicked, say join one plus one equals together with the answer of one, uh, one plus one for two seconds. So take a look at these four scenarios down here. What will the sprite say when the green flag is clicked? What's gonna, what is the sprite going to say? So take a look at what's happening in here. Which of these is a sprite going to say? It is, of course, 
B, 1 plus 1 equals 2. So it's saying just this part here, 1 plus 1 equals, but then we've got an actual operator which is carrying out this mathematical calculation. It is calculating 1 plus 1, which is 2. So we'll actually display that. So it's going to say display 1 plus 1 equals, which is this part, and then the 2, which is this part. Okay, so again, hopefully you've got that right. And that is the end of lesson 12. And that is the end of the full 12 week tutorial. So thank you very much to everyone for joining these past uh, 12 tutorials. Um, we hope that you've enjoyed everything and you're feeling comfortable and confident um, to be delivering all of this to your pupils. I know a lot of you have been delivering these as you've been going along. Um, and I'm, some, I'm sure some of you will be continuing to deliver them over the coming weeks. So again, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you've really enjoyed it and found this useful and uh, you've already seen the impact of this with your kids at home or in the classroom. Um, as always, uh, we want you to please get in touch with any questions that you've got, not just about this tutorial uh, or the past tutorials, but if you do continue to deliver this with your kids over the, the coming weeks and months and you've got any questions whatsoever, please, please, please do get in touch with us and we'll be happy to help. Um, if you're looking for what the next steps are on from this after you have completed the 12 week tutorial uh, with your children, we are going to be releasing even more tutorials for expansion courses in the coming weeks. So please keep an eye out for those on our website and our social media channels. We'll be releasing the details on those when they become available. And if you are ever looking for information on how you can expand with it on the hardware side of things, robotics, we can, of course, also help with that. Um, so please do keep in touch with us as you're working through all of this and you've got any questions whatsoever. But thank you again. Hope you've enjoyed the course. We will speak to you again soon, but bye for now. Thank you.